So the PlayStation 5 is scheduled to be released in just over one year from now, but we've got some news regarding the console's design, actual multiple consoles, and a whole lot more, so let's get into it. G'day guys, I'm Champ Chong, and in today's video we are talking about the PS5. Yes, the PlayStation 5 is just over a year away and we're getting quite a lot of news regarding the console. Now in this video we are going to be discussing some things that have come out over the last couple of weeks or so and we do have a few topics regarding the PS5 to talk about. And a couple of those are regarding the console's design which we saw a couple of months ago and a lot of people weren't happy. And then also on top of that we are talking about the actual possibility of a PlayStation 5 Pro console launching alongside the PS5 itself. So yeah we are going to talk about that and a few more things regarding the PS5 in today's video but if you guys do end up enjoying today's video and you want to help out the video because of the algorithm and all that stuff on YouTube please smack that like button real good because it's greatly appreciated if you do I, I seriously will greatly appreciate it if you guys smack the like button it really helps out the video now let's talk about the PlayStation 5 and what we have heard over the last couple of weeks regarding the console so I am going to touch on the PS5 Pro possibility in a second but the first thing I want to talk about is is the PS5's actual console design. So an insider has revealed that what we saw a couple of months ago with that crazy design of the PS5 that went pretty viral, everyone was talking about it, well, it seems that it's real. Yeah, so this is ridiculous to even just think about because at first people were like, well, this is probably just the dev kit design and all that, but... According to some insiders, this is what we could see with the PlayStation 5 when it does come out. Now, obviously, this won't be the final design of the PS5 because this is, after all, the confirmed dev kit version of the console. But what we will see is some form of this design. So it will translate to the final design. Some factors coming into it will be the actual strange nature of the design completely. So it's really strange that they have gone with such a strange design. One key thing to point out is that the reason it is shaped this way is because of the way the console is actually going to perform. This will help the performance of the console. And honestly, I think that's great and all, but we as consumers probably won't want something to look exactly like this. So yeah, this has been confirmed by insiders that the console will have a strange design. Now, as I said, it may not be the final design. It may not look exactly like this, but we probably won't get a regular rectangle or a square that we've been getting for years and years and years with the PS5. So let me know in the comments down below, just like leave a comment letting me know what you guys think about this design. I know I've touched on this before. A lot of people have talked about this. It was about a month or two ago that this was leaked and everyone just lost their minds, including myself. But the fact that they've actually sort of confirmed that this will be somewhat of the design that we do see in the final version of the PS5 when it does come out, that it will have a strange design because of the performance of the console. Um, it's just, a, it's just really, really strange, even though, yeah, it looks strange. I honestly can't put it in other words, but, uh, what I would like to actually see with this is if Sony can engineer a different way to get the most performance, the best performance out of a console without going into this really, really odd choice. So... I don't know. Uh, I'm excited to see what it does end up looking like. We'll probably find out in the next few months, but hopefully it's not this exact one because uh, uh, Sony has already kind of gone on record and like, like that they aren't happy with the backlash from the fans, from the gamers, from the community with the crappy, crappy, like strange design. I'm, I'm just going to say it. It's not a good design. It looks terrible. It's different, but it's not different in the right way. Personally, that's just my opinion. Now, speaking of the PlayStation 5 console itself and the design, it seems that there will be actually two consoles at launch. There will be a PlayStation 5 and there will be a PlayStation 5 Pro. So similar to how we've got the PS4 and the PS4 Pro, but it will be at launch. So this is just a rumor, but it's something I've been kind of looking into over the last few days. And this has got me a little bit worried too. So I don't know if I like the idea 
of at launch a PS5 and a PS5 Pro. It just seems it's going to split too many people out there. I've seen it happen before. We've all seen it. They sort of did this previously back in the Xbox generation of the Xbox 360. We had like an arcade. We had an Elite. We, we had two different versions of the system. And it did all right because it would sort of cater to a certain audience. It would be like a family-friendly one and the more of a serious gamer. But at the same time, I think that it doesn't really work. We don't really need two consoles at a launch, maybe further down the line a year later. So something similar to what PlayStation did with the PS4. They launched it, they put it out there, and then eventually we saw the PS4 Pro a little bit later down the line. Now this information is coming from Zenj Nishikawa, who is a journalist who predicted, actually correctly predicted, the Nintendo Switch Lite ahead of time. He was told Sony executives are launching two PlayStation models that are different in their performance. The first model will supposedly be the base PS5 and a higher performance one, the PS5 Pro will be the second version. Without the PS5 even being officially announced yet, it will come as no surprise that the exact difference between the two reported consoles are completely unknown. Now at this point in time, we don't know the prices of the consoles, how different they will be, but it looks like that the PS5 Pro will be about 100 to 150 US dollars more than the base model PS5, but that's unconfirmed at this point in time. Now you're probably wondering why have they decided to go potentially with a PS5 Pro at launch alongside a PS5? Well, it's because it there is a chance that the PS5 regular model might be a dumbed down version. So the PS5 Pro could be what the PS5 should have been in the first place, but it all comes down to the price itself. So it seems that it was a little too expensive to put on the market at about 500 US dollars. This is unconfirmed by the way, but that's what it seems like. They are going to create a less powerful version, which will actually just be more consumer friendly for the average Joe out there that doesn't want to spend five to $600 on a brand new console. So. I don't really know what to think about this. I'm a little bit sad, and this is sad news if it is true. If these sources are true regarding a dumbed-down PS5, which will be the base model PS5, and then the PS5 Pro actually being what the PS5 should have been in the first place, that's really, really disappointing right there. I, I, I really don't know what to think about it. I, I'm sad about that, but at the same time, I'm like, I guess Sony want to just get as many people to be playing brand new next gen games on their system so they've created two different ones now what does this mean for xbox what they're gonna have to really hit back with something because originally xbox was rumored to have two consoles a sort of just xbox next gen console and an xbox next gen pro console similar to this but they've gone away from that microsoft have reported that they've confirmed that they will just have the one console at launch but now if playstation come out and say hey we've got two consoles we've got one for everybody and then we've got one for the hardcore gamers out there and if they advertise that and they market it that way they're gonna sell a whole lot more consoles but the reality is if it's true regarding these rumors and these reports that they've actually just gone ahead and dumbed down the PS5 and made the PS5 Pro just the original PS5, what it was meant to be because of the price and everything and just them not being able to potentially put that out on shelves realistically, that's really bad. That's really bad. And if they actually go with that and we see that happen, I'm going to be pretty upset and I'm pretty sure a lot of gamers out there will be upset too if they don't buy into the hype and marketing from Sony. But we'll have to wait and see what this does all lead to. So yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think regarding all this. And now we're going to talk about something more this gen and next gen for, for the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5. And it's that Sony have actually confirmed cross-platform. They've opened it to developers, which is just amazing, amazing, amazing news. I thought I'd end the show with this piece of news because the other two pieces of news with the design of the console and then the PS5 and the PS5 Pro, they were kind of sad news. But this thing right here, this is amazing. So yeah, a couple of days ago, PlayStation, Sony, they just decided, hey, we're going to open it up. PS4, cross-platform play, and then the PS5 will have it too. That's just awesome right there. So developers will now have the ability to have cross-platform for all their games that do come out on the PlayStation platform. So that right there is just a huge, huge game changer. I, I can't wait to see what developers do with this, which developers actually use this, 
and how it's going to actually affect the gaming sales and just the gaming base overall. If you don't know, pretty much like Nintendo, Xbox, and PC, or well, Xbox and PC are kind of together anyway, but they've all already just opened it up to developers to allow cross-platform, but now Sony have actually allowed it 100%. And I was actually tweeting about this the other day, which is crazy. Like I tweeted, why aren't sports games that get released every single year, why aren't they available just cross-play? Why, why don't we have that? And then all of a sudden, Sony just decided, hey, uh, we're opening up crossplay and I was like whoa what a coincidence because the thing is I play a lot of sports games like I, I play literally everything out there like any sort of game but every single year I do get hooked on FIFA and NBA 2k they're like my go-to games every year because my mates play them and it's just one of those like casual sort of games you get to play even though it does get infuriating and you rage but one thing that sucks is I've got a couple friends that are on PlayStation I've got a couple friends that are on Xbox and then I have to kind of pick and choose who I'm playing with what I'm doing but like, it's the exact same game. You don't really have an advantage on either one. So hopefully these exclusivity things, those contracts, they disappear over the next couple of years. And we actually do see, hopefully it's sooner than that, actually. And then we hopefully do see games actually cross-play that do come out yearly. So not even just sports games, but other games that do come out all the time, every couple of years. Like, Call of Duty is doing it this year. Hopefully we see a Battlefield. I don't know how EA are going to tackle all this. But seeing Activision, Activision of all companies do something like this and allow crossplay is a great, great step in the right direction. And hopefully now that it is open to everybody, especially that PlayStation are on board with this, hopefully more developers do it and hopefully more publishers actually allow their developers to go in this direction. So I think that's just great news right there. Um, let me know what games you want to see cross-play, like along with everything, like on PC, on Nintendo, on Xbox, on PlayStation, on even mobile. Like originally the, the biggest game was Fortnite and even before that Rocket League was kind of doing the cross-play thing. But to see Fortnite kind of take that and we've got to thank Fortnite, even if you're not a fan of that game, we've got to thank Epic Games for doing that and making it so cross-play friendly on every single device, even, even your phone. So like, that's just awesome right there that we do now have this and Sony has signed off on it and have allowed it. So anyway, guys, uh, that does it for this video. Hopefully you did enjoy it. It was a little bit more of a sit down rather than like general news. Let me know what you guys think of this, where I just sit down I talk about quite a lot of things regarding a certain topic. And the thing is, I was away for a couple of weeks. I am back now. Sorry about that. I've uh, been like living my personal life and I, I probably should have made some videos. But at the same time, I was like, there's not too much gaming news around. So I was like kind of creatively just dumbed down. I just didn't know what to do. But uh, I'm back and there's actually some pretty big news I want to keep talking about. So I'm probably going to have, a, I will definitely have another video out tomorrow. Probably will have a video every single week this week. And then also just a quick thing here at the end of the video. And I'm kind of rambling. I'm going to be at PAX in Melbourne. So PAX Australia. I'm going to be there on Saturday and Sunday. So if you want to see me, I'm going to be at the Intel booth uh, and just make sure you follow my Twitter and Instagram. So that way, you know, everything that I'm doing where I am. And uh, yeah, because I don't really know my schedule just yet, but it's going to be fun. So hopefully I see you guys in Melbourne if you are going to PAX. But yeah, hopefully I see you on cross platform games everywhere because that's going to be awesome. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video.